Gyum Hee has a long journey ahead, a massive detour. From Yangji to Guangzhou, then by air to Bangkok in Thailand, only then to South Korea where she'll be safe. She's at the airport. One of the camera team, posing as a friend, is filming as Gyum Hee prepares her audacious escape. Her plane's on time, but she's a bag of nerves. She has to fill out an emigration form, and she just can't get it right. Kim He needs to get through security, passport control, and onto that plane. Only once it's left can she relax. I'm really, really nervous about this. I hope I feel better after I've got through the passport check. A slip now, and the game's up. The plane to Thailand's waiting on the tarmac. I was so nervous. This was the first time I tried anything like that. They asked me if I was Korean Chinese because of my accent. I said I was Chinese. They stamped the passport and said bye bye. <laughs> Kim Hee's leaving China, but she's had to leave her son Bo Song behind. May too has left loved ones. After two days traveling, she's reached the border between China and Laos. But it's crawling with guards. They're checking everyone who goes through. I'm so nervous, I'm trembling. I'm so nervous, it looks like they'll catch us. If I get caught, I'll just kill myself. It's too risky. They'll have to find another route across this border, through the jungle. First, they spend a night in a safe house. In case something goes wrong, May sends a video message via the camera. Hang in there, Mom, and that cheeky brother of mine, so we're together again. I love you both very much. A world away, in Seoul, South Korea, Pastor Chun is leaving for Thailand. He hopes to meet the refugees there, if they make it. <laughs> There's always a possibility of failure. The chances are 50-50. We never tell them how hard it's going to be. They wouldn't come if we did. Early morning, and the Overland group have now found the jungle border. <laughs> Now they're in Laos, but they're not home and dry. Here the terrain is harsher. And Laos is no friendlier to escaping North Koreans. They won't be safe until they get to Thailand. If these various countries would cooperate, then we'd always manage to get people out. But these countries are against us and what we're doing. They'll arrest us at any time. 
There's danger almost everywhere we go. They've managed to cross the border, but now they have to rejoin their minibus, waiting for them somewhere on the road. If they're stopped here in Laos, they'll pretend to be South Koreans. The journey's taken its toll. Eight-year-old Min Chao is sick. It's only 50 miles to the Thai border, but the refugees can't risk asking locals for medical help. Still traveling in style, Gyum Hee is finally out of China. Pastor Chun has come to meet her. Flying out of China on a fake passport is risky enough. Bringing a child would be pushing it. Now, as they head for South Korea, Pastor Chun's worried. Gyum Hee's fake Chinese persona may just be too good. The South Koreans may doubt she's a real North Korean refugee. <laughs> Another flight, the last leg. Kim Hee's about to land in South Korea. There, she'll declare she's from the north and present herself as an official defector. But will she get through? The group who've had to trek overland, there's just one more obstacle, the Mekong River. The border to Thailand and into Bangkok. Their journey started on a river, and that, if they make it, is how their escape to freedom will end. If we can get across this river, my life will completely change. I'm so proud of what I've achieved so far, but I'm worried I'll be able to cope so well from now on.
Crocodiles lurk beneath the boat, and border patrols cruise the river at night. But the lights of Thailand are in sight. One last step, and they're free. In the morning, May's on the phone to her mum, Lin, still stuck with her brother in China. Here in Bangkok, May can enter the South Korean embassy. She too can now become an official defector. For Gim Hee, a new hairstyle, new job, a new life in Seoul. Most important, a new ID card. And this one's real. She's settling in, but she's yet to bring her son, Bo Song, to join her from China. Mom, he cries, saying that mummy left me behind. It's been three or four months since I saw him. I hear he cries when he sees my empty wardrobe. I wish he could come here sooner, but to make a life here, I must adjust properly. I can't bring him here just because I want to. There are now 13,000 North Korean refugees in the South, four times as many as just four years ago, many of them guided here by this church. May is now living in South Korea and has been joined by her mother and brother. Min Chal is with his mother in South Korea too. These are the lucky few, the ones who've made it and survived the last great escape from communism through two of the most oppressive countries on earth. Gyum Hee is hoping her son Bo Song will arrive from China today. It's taken months to arrange for him to be flown to Seoul. But he doesn't seem to be there. Today, Bo Song's getting the treatment he needs. He's doing well and learning to stand alone. And back on the border, between China and North Korea, refugees continue to risk their lives to escape. <laughs> 